residential, um, for commercial. Um, one of our sales reps is we're, we, we're uh, going to have a very large project industrial in another state that's almost 132,000 square feet of just epoxy. So epoxy is going to be big. There's certain times when you're going to sell epoxy, um, and there'll be certain times when you'll sell a polished concrete floor. So i was very happy to have Dan here. Dan is, is an epoxy man. He's going to be running the event today. He's got 18, 18 years of experience of epoxy floors. If it's coming up from underneath the slab, it's going to keep coming up. Could be a, a, a broken pipe. Could be a lot of things that's causing that moisture. Okay? Could be just the land that it's on. The land has a problem. Okay? If that's the issue, you have to sell a moisture block. Okay? Which is another product you're going to put on over that concrete before you put down your first your, your first uh, primer. Uh, people in this industry oversell the expectation of the customer. Okay? If the customer says, are there going to be bubbles in my epoxy, what are you going to say? There might be. There might be. <laughs> More than likely there's going to be some bubbles somewhere along the way. There'll be some in there'll be some in What's that? Just a little one. Ones, okay, just little ones. Okay, so that, yeah, there's gonna probably be some bubbles. That's a normal characteristic of epoxy. You can prep the floor, you can put down the volume spark, and you can do, do your chip coat and put a top coat on all in one day. Okay, we're gonna show you how you do a uh, quartz broadcast floor in 100% solids epoxy. We're gonna show you how you do uh, the uh, the chip. You know, the, you have a chip, the chip floor. We're gonna show you how you do. The, the metallics floors, okay? The, the metallics floors, the designer coatings, um, if you go to metallics epoxies on your um, Google and go to images, you can see a lot of the different colors. They're called chip brushes, okay? These are available in two inch, three inch, and four inch, okay? You can buy them at Home Depot, or we're gonna have them in stock here for you, so if you're placing your order, we're gonna have these, okay? Two inch, three inch, and four inch. These are pretty much your cut brushes that you're gonna be doing up into, uh, when would you use these? Going up in the, any type of wall? Or just cutting in the perimeter. Yeah, cut, you cut the whole perimeter with it. Any, like, going up in front of stairways. Two, three, and four inch, okay? Your rollers, okay? The importance of the rollers. Do you want to tell me the importance of the rollers? Lint, lint, lint free. You do not want to, rollers will always put lint in a floor. So if you get some, if you're not using a, a chip, floor, a quartz, any kind of, if you're doing a solid color, you start getting roller lint in there, your customer, you're not getting paid. Get your head. You have to have a smooth floor, so you always have to have a lint-free roller. All right, so these shoes here come in uh, medium, large, and extra large. These are the pro finish shoes. You're going to kick your shoe right into it. His feet ain't good. The size of this. Just kick, kick it in. It has a yeah, those, those fit. They're an extra large. Okay. Like the rake, it's a rake squeegee. Okay, they come in uh, eighth inch, three sixteenths, and quarter inch, which is basically five millimeter, ten millimeter, and twenty millimeter. Okay, we're using twenty millimeter here today for the uh, for the metallics. Okay, because you're gonna put the metallics on at how many square feet per gallon? Fifty. Fifty square feet per gallon. So they get a, they get, you're gonna get a, your first job is gonna be a two-car garage. It's gonna be two. Uh, it's gonna be a 400 square feet. It's 20 by 20. Okay. The first thing you're gonna say is, well, how much product do I need? Okay. And your first garage that you're gonna get is going to be a flake broadcast floor, which is what we're gonna demonstrate right now. Okay. Our first one. So square footage on these kits, you will get on a three-coat system. Let's say. You're gonna do your base coat? Top, finish coat, and then you can do a poly optional polyaspartic coat or urethane. Right, so let's, let's, so let's talk to you about what you can do for a two car garage, okay? Because somebody's gonna come in and say, hey, I got a quote for $1,000 for two car, okay? So what you wanna do is you wanna make sure you're comparing an apple to an apple, okay? These are, these are color kits, okay? This color kit is going to go to every gallon of 
the resin that you have, you're going to put this one of these into it, okay, for the color, okay? If somebody says, I just want a flat gray epoxy floor, okay, you're basically going to roll out, correct, or squeegee? Squeegee. Squeegee a 10 mil, so you're going to take the 10 mil, the, the, the middle, the middle one of these squeegees, a 10 mil one, okay? But this, this is the 10 mil, this is the 20 mil, okay? Just so you can kind of see, that they, they look pretty darn close, really, but, but there is a difference. Like, that's a 10 mil and this is a 20 mil. Okay. Squeegee is very important. Yeah. If you, if you try to do it with a flat squeegee, it's inconsistent. You need dips. It, you, it's really... It's right, really so this is going to control the actual amount of epoxy piece. that you're dispersing on the floor, okay? So this is a very important tool. This tool is $59 for the, for the whole thing, the whole contraption, okay? So it's not super expensive. And you're going to clean this with xylene at the end. Okay, so you're just going to clean it off with xylene, and that's all you're going to make. But, but make sure you keep it clean, because if you don't keep it clean, you're gonna you're gonna ruin your you're gonna ruin. If you have a bad labor, forget it. It'll yeah, be you're ruined. Gonna find it regularly. Okay, so make sure they. Keep if it someone clean. had to cut this all in, and you're like sitting there, and you know you just tape it, just tape it on the stick, and use the stick as the brush. Or you can use a rack. Or you can buy a rack attack. Yeah. Yeah. Or you can buy a rack attack. Right. Right. But I get that. I don't know. Oh. Well, we'll show you. Well, that must be polishing. No. Yeah. Right. So you're better off using as your prime coat, your base coat, 10 mils, one kit. I always go heavier on the middle coat, the, the uh, chip coat or whatever you want to call it. It's thin on the first coat, yeah. thicker on the second coat. Because your, your base coat is more penetrating. And what you want that to get into the pores of the concrete so it doesn't delaminate. And your middle coat is what you want to put nice and even and thick so it gives it some build. And then your, your optional clear coat, you don't have to do, I mean, unless they pay for it. Um, you want to do a top, like a poly, something UV resistant, like, you know, you, like polyaspartic, polyurea. David. Between coats, like when they put their first coat down, like when did they put a color coat down? Do you know what I'm saying? Sometimes they just go in and they just put, the, if they're gonna do a full plate floor, they don't even need to put a color in the, into the You product. don't need to, but some people like to do it. Right. If you do it right, and you use the, the, the correct, Flake per square foot, you don't need to put a color, but a lot of people will put, like, if you're doing a gray based chip, you'll do a gray floor just so it looks more even. Anytime you're in a high traffic area, you want to put a polyaspartic or you want to put a urethane coating on top. The urethane coatings are much more expensive than the epoxies. These kits sell for $50 per gallon, so it's $150 per, per kit. Okay? The colors, when you want the colors, they're gonna cost you $10 per little pint of color that, you get, that you're gonna get there, okay? So a proper kit's gonna cost you $170 with color. Like a normal garage, like what would your normal routine be? A normal garage, full flake, or just like a light broadcast? A full flake. Okay, so a full flake, all right, there's two options. You can always do the prime coat, which would be like your moisture mitigation. You can always do that. A lot of people do it to be safe. I mean, sometimes it just depends if you test the slab and it has moisture. Most of the time, the slabs are fine. So then you would go in and you would put your base coat down at 10 mils, and then you would, you would throw the chip, completely cover the floor with chip. That would be your first coat, basically. And then that would have to dry, and then your second coat... What's the dry time? I mean, depends. Well, yeah. Normally, yeah. normally we come back the next day, but then there's also okay, fast so, care. So products. not not polyaspartic types. We're not getting back. Polyaspartic's on different than epoxy. So that's okay. Epoxy cracks lines, and then you would throw your, you would you would spread your first 10 mil coat out, um, depending on which system. So I mean, even for quartz, it's 10 mils. For it's still over right. Right, right. And then you throw your flake, you throw whatever. Otherwise, if you're doing a standard which would be your light, you know, light, like a gray color with a light flake, like the Home Depot looking kits. Um, you would do a base, a prime coat of a color, let it dry, then come back and do another color, gray, whatever, tan, and then throw your light flake in that. And then again, your optional clear coat would be your polyaspartic urethane. You know, it depends how you sell it. But not everyone wants the extra clear coat, but... And again, it's a rolled on floor, so it kind of, when you roll on urethane, it changes the look of it. Like with metallic, it's night and day. You roll, you roll polyaspartic or urethane on a metallic floor, it changes the look. And now it's not the glass finish. It's a rolled look. Right. So you gotta, it's, 
you got to make sure that because still the people are still they don't really know these coatings down here like it, it's very new in florida like we i mean we've been doing metallic in michigan and new york for 10 years eight years and down here it's still they don't really know what it is so it's very important to explain in detail even make a sample and roll urethane on your sample say okay well this is going to be your finished product so are you sure you want this because everyone you know has different expectations for what the finished floor is going to be the mixing is the biggest problem you make one bad mix on a job forget it it's ruined there's nothing you can do you gotta you gotta xylene clean it it's a nightmare did so everybody just understand that it is it, super it, hurt it, it, if you make one bad mix so say you're doing a job like this you start here, you know, you come, you're squeegeeing down, you're working. All of a sudden, the mix right here is bad. But then the next three mixes are good. Doesn't matter. The whole floor is ruined. You're going to have to scrape. You're going to have to puddle it up. You're going to have to get it xylene. It's, it's a chemical nightmare. So mixing is pretty much... That's, that's 100%. It's the key to this job because... Always use the same container for your resin. And you always use the same container. Not a container for hardener. I mean, I'm going to mix it all together because we're just demonstrating. But technically, you would have. Well, these are in kits, so you would you would put all the kits in one. You would just dump everything in one bucket. But let's say you're not going to use. Still, they make messes. They just. It's hard to get someone to be and and do this the right way. So you you want to start. You know, it's the, the best people to learn is people that never have experience, never done it, because then you just tell them the right way. Like you demonstrate, you show them. Keep it clean, neat, and organized, and you'll never have a problem. Because epoxy will be messy. You, you know, you walk on the spikes, so you finish a job, and you walk out of a building, or walk out of a garage, and your spikes have a little bit of epoxy, and you track it on the driveway. It dries, it's gonna be there. You're going to see it, the customer will see that. So, the, the right. kit, you, you, yeah, the mixing is very important, and, and clean, you know, being clean and neat is very important. So the best thing to do is when he's getting ready to start, he's skidding it, just get your stopwatch. Okay, make sure you go. So you kind of not, you don't want it to ride on the bottom. So you really don't want, you don't want your uh, paddle hitting the bottom of the bottom. Right, you want to keep it moving. Because if you get little, say you're doing a clear coat, and you got little pieces of orange in it, job's ruined. You got buy some more product. Buy more. I know already. I'm joking. You're not going to get any coffee, man. It's like water and rapid step overlay. It's got the exact drop. So you have problems. And if you only go a minute and a half, you can have problems. And when I'm buying the most material, okay, I want to make sure I don't have a problem. Oh, no. Normally, you would wet the roller before you roll the floor. So like, if you spread your thing out and it's dry and you just go to roll, that's gonna pull the material off. So you would, like when you first pour the puddle, you would just wet it. Now some people that buy polished concrete, actually you get somebody to come in, they grind their floor a couple times, and they'll put a clear coat on top of it, and they walk away, and they call that polished concrete, okay? So when you're talking to people about, like, do you want to see the light bulb in the floor? Like, that's why you kind of want to have something like this so people can see it. All right, now he's going to broadcast the flakes. So normally... 
There's different ways you can do this. You can, you can do it where you kind of lightly cover everything first, and then you add to it. Some guys will just do each area and just douse it. I usually, I usually do that so I can grind it. So I'll throw it out first, spread it, and then go back and throw it heavy. Kind of like New Year's Eve, feeding the chickens. At Dan, at Dan Bowman's house. Oh, you already clean that? All right. So flake, for full coverage, a flake is usually 10 pounds per 100 square feet. So if you have a two car garage, 400 square feet, you would roughly need 40 pounds of flake to do a complete broadcast. Smaller flake takes more because there's eighth of an inch, sixteenth of an inch, this is quarter inch. So the smaller the flake, it might take a little more for coverage. Um, like I said, it's normally 10, 10 to 15 pounds. So you know the smaller might be, might take a little bit more. 10 pounds per hundred square feet. Everybody got that? Because you're gonna have to take your test at the end of the day here to make sure you pass. And how many and how many feet per kit do you get out of this? All right, so you're pretty good. It's pretty much covered. I mean, it's kind yeah, that's full coverage. As far as quartz, we'll do a quartz one. You're gonna use a flat squeegee because. You, the the, um, the 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 trick is you want to seal you want the epoxy to, to seal that chip into the floor so you want it to be a tight push so the material gets and encapsulates all through the, the chip and that's normally the next day when it's dry and then let's say you sweep it up and you clean it up and you have a little you know, sometimes you get a little like maybe bleeding through where the dark spots came through you just in your finish coat you throw a little more chip and blend it roll it so it's it's real easy to do so you wouldn't spray this. Some people scrape it. I've never scraped it ever in my life. I've never had an issue. 20. I'm doing a double coat because it's obviously a primer. So normally you would put one coat first and then do this. So we're just doing two of them. Foot for this, yeah, make sure and a dollar for the prep, so I get nine bucks. Metallic can sell for ten dollars for a foot all day long.
Yeah. I'm just going to leave it. I'm not even going to touch it. Right. We're just going to slosh the pigment in there with some downstairs. So just leave this away. Now this is a smaller area, so the effect won't be as great in this area. But you just basically you're just going to leave it. Now this one. So all I did was blend, obviously, two different colors. No floor. You'll never be able to duplicate. Like whatever you do, one place, you'll never be able to do it exact. You can mix the same colors, but it'll never come out exact. So once that sets, it's going to take at least 20 minutes for that to start moving around. You'll see the highlights coming through. And it's just like a blend. Yeah. So what color? Yeah. The mist. Yeah, the mist. Now this I did. Out, you see how it's starting to flow out. I'm going to change it up. I'm going to show you a different technique for this. So we're going to add a little bit of highlights. So let's say you someone wants like a furrow floor with a little bit of coffee color. So I'm just going to do like something like that. Some go, some don't. It's just a pattern. That's a squeegee look. So the, the, sometimes the, the pattern will, it will, it will dissipate somewhat, but it's no guarantee. Like it'll move and do whatever, it, okay. however the coating wants to move. Gotcha. So they have to, you know, you have to show them what that looks like. So you just rub the highlights. In. There's really no pattern, really. It's just whatever it is. How much you want. How little you want. This technique is the most movement you'll get in the, the top. So remember, you never roll it with a roller like you see on YouTube. Let those guys roll it, don't follow that technique. This is what you do right here. All you're doing is really flipping the coating over. It's just flipping. So all you're doing is swirl. No, no exact pattern, like you don't have to keep it even, like some people want to do. 
do it with me. You just so it's all going to keep moving. It keeps you moving. All you want to do is just want to flip it. But this will create the most movement. That's the ribbon effect. The ribbon technique. I saw that on the computer. It has to be true. Is that what I thought it would be? Oh, so it's like the opposite of the other Chris. He actually wants to help you and support you so you went. Oh, I get that. Yeah, we're we'll we'll the opposite. We'll show you yeah. the right way. So this no, is going to. No, but it's going to take a time that you can tell me. Wait, 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 wait. Right, so you can come back next week and see this, or we can take a picture of it for those that are not here. What is that? Email addresses, and we'll email it to you. It takes literally about 20 minutes for seven minutes. Tommy, so you guys can email address right here. If you see where you can email address, oh, it starts saying it. Yeah, it's going to show you. Yeah, it's going to show you. Oh, it's gonna be like an eight mil oh, okay. yeah, oh. quote, okay, and that's gonna be black. Does that mean that's like a dust Which means that you're upstairs with the glitter floor, we've already been playing the sound gas. Yep, you're doing brown base. So you can always do you can always do this technique yeah, with acetone or denatured alcohol. And what it does, it gives it a crater. Hey, Dan, have a call. Hey, careful. It's my eye. Get the Hey, listen. Some people like this look. Yeah, this looks like the moon. I Really? Careful, hold your, watch your eyes. Guys. Watch your eyes. So you basically just, you're just dousing it with acetone, and it's going to cause that. That looks like repellent. Some, some, you know, some people really like this. It's going to make it move more. That's pretty good. It's making it consistent, right? Yeah, and the brown, uh, the brown metallics that we used upstairs next to my office, what was those colors? Coffee. Or, uh, bark brown. Wait, what? Upstairs in my office. White and gray. Coffee. 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 Which is why. The white's pearl and the brown is the shape of the Which is the brown. This is supposed to be the brown. It's his 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 br